Hey, it's Terry here, D-Lab, with a fine vintage National 183 in need of D-Lab's help. I picked this thing up from a guy in a pickup truck. His name was Mr. Haney. He gave me a great deal. Let me show you what I got. So as you can plainly see, there's some thermal meltdown evidence here from the old transformer that was in the radio. And the new transformer that somebody put in is like spring-loaded. It's on a little diving board. That's because only one screw is holding it in. When I got it, it actually moved so much that it shattered the 5U4 rectifier tube. So let's zoom in and take a look at the installer's handiwork. You can see he really loved these butt splices. Took this big heavy wire and butt spliced it into this nice little wire. And of course, we have the diving board power transform mounting job. Great. I would say this kind of looks like the work of a cobbler. You know how them cobblers are. They get in there, they get in a big hurry, and you never know. Oh, what the heck? Who, what, what, what do you call a cobbler? Who are you bashing on here? This is some of my finest work. Fine work? What do you mean, man? The, the butt splices? Who in the heck would use that in a vintage radio? What? Haven't you ever heard of the automobile? What do you think they put those under dash CD players in with? Butt splices, man. It's butt splices. All right, Mr. D-Lab, I can see that you're not very happy with my installation job. I've got a premium solution for you. I use it in all my high-end repairs. It's called Why Nuts. What do you think of that? Well, Cobbler, I appreciate your input, but I'll tell you what. I'll handle it myself. Why don't you hit the road? We'll see you again. Obviously, I have some cleanup work to do. Now, the thing you have to remember about the National 183 receiver is that that power transformer is kind of an oddball. It's an 800 volt center tap transformer at 100 mils. Then it has a 5 volt winding for the rectifier tube, which is 2 amps. But then the real clincher is, is the 6 volt line for the filaments is a 6 amp feed. Okay, it's pretty crazy. Now if you look at any of the other receivers, you can see they went down about a 4 amp on that filament line. But if you want to stick to what was in there, it's a tough bird to find. Hammond makes one. It's the model 278X. But that's going to get you for 100 bucks. Luckily for me, I have a replacement transformer for this receiver. So let's get this big boat anchor out of here and put in the right transformer. Since I have no interest in keeping the old transformers in here, I'm just going to snip him out. And drop it out and get my new transformer ready to go in. So here's the old Pigoramus power transformer removed. You can see the battle damage uh, that resulted in the last transformer cooking. So I'm going to clean this up first and then we'll get the new transformer mounted. So I've cleaned up the toxic residue from the old transformer. Now here's my replacement, okay? It's going to drop in this hole, but as you can see, it doesn't quite fit right, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make an adapter plate. So this is the aluminum adapter plates on my mill. I'm going to mill that out. We'll get her mounted up. So there's the custom made adapter plate. It's in place. Let's put in the transformer. Well, there it is. New transformer in place. Rectifier tube reinstalled. She's ready to wire up. New power transformer is wired up. I added a terminal board for the AC and the 6 volt filament windings. As you can see, there are no butt connectors or wire nuts. So here we go. Initial test. I have a two foot jumper wire as an antenna using a NC303 speaker. She's live. And it's receiving stations. So I'm going to take a mission accomplished on the transformer R&R. Now it's time for the total restoration of the receiver. So if you end up with a vintage piece that's been cobbled up, don't give up. There's always hope. Here we are with an NC183 that's probably going to live another 50 years longer than me. Hope you like the video.